thank you so much. Um, I really love the magazine Court Green, and I'm grateful that Amy was reading it as Brown chose this poem. The Poetic Memoirs of Lady Daivu. That morning, to research the form, she rummaged in a crawl space for a volume her father had lent a dozen years before. He no longer speaks to her. Her poems referring to him are venomous, he claims, though he does reminisce with her children and ex on the years she was an infant, when friends still dropped by early evenings for a drink. That afternoon, inside the cover of Lady Daibu's memoir, she found a few notes in his scrawl, Hitori Sumide, a single violet, contains the phrase Hitori Sumi, living alone. And because he does not live with her mother, perhaps these notes to himself stay to himself and journal entries. The cricket's loud confusion, moon's tranquil brightness. Did he know their correspondence would come to this? Scraps of illusions tucked between pages. This morning, when she opens the memoir, she cannot tell which are her father's underlined passages and which are her own. For the one to whom I wanted to show it was not there. Seeing how a language so poor in vocabulary can be so rife with ambiguity. The Grudge. I watered the grudge, not with the fervent devotion of a nun clutching rosary beads, not with the destructive clockwork of a drunk spilling vodka tumblers on the cactus erupting through his heart. But I watered it, went out there at midnight with a can of spittle, moon dangling like a light bulb from its frail cord, and I dripped the dark, nourishing fluid into its roots, my face pulsing like a blister as the venom petals bloom. But um, the short version is that two lovers are um, discussing a meal on the cell phone from, from far. And then um, the lover who's trapped in an airport, the meal starts to speak to her. Though the meal hasn't been prepared yet, so it's not like it's speaking through her body. It's speaking through all that she is. Yes. The perfect faceless fish. It is a miracle that I should speak to delight you. I feel like a flag, more or less, but music is my breeze. I have many friends, rest assured. You have given me my water, and for this I must thank you. You have been described as elegant in your time, and it is long the road to go. I am honored to accompany you. A picture is simply what I am, an old crease, a perfect book. You will miss me in your sterile anticipation of something to hang this picture on. I come and go, an edible saint. But if you feast on me, you will be hungry. I know your intelligence, carnal somehow, and I began to speak when you began to want me. Please don't interrupt. I cross my legs. I flood the darkened rooms of art for a while. And frankly, that moment is gone. We could only talk through our eyes, and now that is gone. But this is deeper than the marrow. We don't need rods, cones, those Sanskrit piles of things. I am seeing through a stain right now in your love. I am swimming for years, 
In a sudden absence of trouble in a deftly handled conversation, I, a luminous fish, felt in this spectacle of impossibility a fragrant graze upon the world, an intermittent twitch, whisper. If I had hands, I would touch everyone. I vanish in the green of the background that goes on and on, made by those who recognize it that way. There's always something better to do. I live in a terminal, and so do you. Listen, we are trying to end everything by this enormous silence. Brief. But it was the old thing, so it shall be very loud, very loudish in the squabbles we have about right and wrong, and where the flagpole is, and do we ever, will we ever have enough space to play the game? I am deeply knowing you and feel you have chosen me for this conversation before it's cooked, before anything is prepared, anything at all. The lesser details, never mind the first exquisite choice that brought me into being, this conversation of fishy birth. I've had you in my pocket, it's all that I know, but a knowing that is useless without, without this acknowledgement in a mini chamber room. You, is that what you said? Enormous, darkly, I accept it. I flow around and fold into everything your comic, desultory contempt, which I'm beginning to think functions as glue for you. The prettiness for me is the opening city and moving through it with you. The young old fold around your mouth, seismic. Trust that. I am gold in the reconciliation, gold in the anticipation, paradise, great ambiance. What's available is not of any use to what is me today. A stoic longing symbol of studying peace in outlandish quarters. Your long room in the night, your whole long body, which is faceless too, to acquire your trust is of utmost importance to me. I am foolish, I, talking fish. The time is right, the time is here for me to make promises to you that is sometimes standing in a bakery, laughing becomes professional, wife with empty folders, and I see the muscle embedded, the one that can't be removed, in the beloved text that is offered, a torso-sized drink to me. Each time I break the surface, turn around, bubbles cascading from the incommensurate path of my tail, tentacle, limbs. You make me enough. So I hold a cup, gasping with laughter, and the t-shirts covered with arcane scribbles carry the message, awkward grins and foams to their ears. Yours are wired to everything there is. You're an impossible telephone. I lift my head for the last sip of your, ew. A lamb leaps over the fins, the arms I would have, we would hold each other in. I am waiting. No difficulty with gold. As I told your mother, I have obtained access to an uncontrolled intimacy. Fear not, certainly I did not phrase it like that. But I met her in the most advanced communication terrain and exchanged messages concerning our difficulties with God and man. I am beginning to know. I am gold, a transforming ship, the clipped end of an utterance I was saving for you when I saw your swinging light, the door approach, and everything moves close. Sharon Olds.